the title of our episode today is uh, Latest Advances in 5G and Beyond 5G Technologies. Uh, hi, everyone. Welcome to OJ Plugs, the podcast series by the IEEE Open Journal of Antennas and Propagation. My name is Lei Guo, and I am an associate professor at uh, Dalian University of Technology, China. I serve as an OJAP associate editor, and uh, I am the lead guest editor of OJAP's special section on recent uh, advances in compact or integrated antenna techniques for 5G applications. Today, it's a good pleasure and honor to host Professor Ke Wu. He is a professor of electrical engineering, industrial research chair of future wireless technologies, and director of Polygram Research Center with the Ta- Polytechnic Montreal, Canada. So, Professor Wu, many thanks for accepting our invitation. So, today, together with Professor Wu, we will take an in depth look at the latest advances in 5G and the beyond 5G technologies. Uh, so, firstly, Professor Wu, could you please kindly share your career path with us? Uh, why you chose the subject of electromagnetics? Thank you very much, Professor Guo, for this kind of invitation. Uh, well, uh, it's my great pleasure to, uh, to talk to you and uh, uh, our colleagues in the field. Uh, I began my profession, uh, professional journey with uh, research topics uh, the on numerical method developments for guided wave structures. Uh, I worked at that time also high frequency semiconductor devices and the microwave passive and active circuits such as mixer and the slow wave techniques. And actually, um, since the, uh, the beginning of my uh, PhD thesis, um, I have worked on pretty large uh, variety of topics covering electromagnetic circuits, antennas and systems, as well as modeling techniques. Uh, in my PhD thesis was on the investigation and implementation of uh, integrated phase shifters and the slow wave structures uh, based on the uh, mo- electromagnetic multilayer and uh, periodic structures. So basically, from very beginning, uh, I realized that the importance of the um, uh, different type of the uh, the structures. Uh, for example, the importance of antennas in the uh, circuit system research and development and how we can put the integrated su- the antenna and the circuits together. So this is why I, become, uh, I became uh, the uh, APS and MTTS members right away after the, uh, my uh, PhD uh, uh, defense. So I joined actually the IEEE as regular members in 87. Uh, well, we talk about right now, 35 years ago. Um, so uh, after my PhD uh, degree studies. Uh, so, and of course, I have also worked on uh, electro-optic devices for microwave photonics, uh, the, which actually involve also the antenna aspect. So basically, I have worked from day one on, the, uh, on not only the microwave circuits uh, system, but also antenna integration uh, technologies. So the... Um, so this, uh, the integration becomes so important today that the, we, we can see that the, uh, the, this, this is, is really the uh, fundamental driving force behind all the uh, developments for different applications, okay? particularly all the commercial sectors. Uh, I should say that the, really the, uh, uh, the, uh, could be um, you know, attributed to the, uh, the integration uh, technology development. Okay, so that's the um, that's the current uh, the uh, status. For even for myself, for example, I worked. If you look at the, my career development, so from early device integration, then the, to the structure integrations. That's that's why we developed the concept of the substrate integrated waveguide techniques, and also the um, the new uh, the for example recently we talked about the um, multifunction integrations. How we integrate the different wireless uh, functionalities into single uh, transceiver blocks, and also the uh, recently I worked also the uh, the uh, antenna and circuit integration. How we can merge this 
uh, two uh, usually separate functions into single uh, the uh, you know design space. Uh, so that's why circuits become antenna, antenna becomes circuit. Uh, that's the my you know the my current interest. And of course, uh, the uh, we uh, well everybody have been working on the electromagnetic problem today. And but if you want to ask why we selected the uh, the uh, EM as our uh, professional career, well, I would say that to the early time I uh, I have a special interest. I would say intrigued by the EM properties. So why? Because EM actually allows us to expand the the uh, low dimensionality to high dimensionality of electronics. Uh, if you look, if if you see the uh, the conventional low frequency uh, electronics as one dimension or two dimension of the, uh, the the systems, so the but the electromagnetic uh, the uh, application or into the electronics allows you to expand the the problem or the circuit system from low dimension, so one or two dimension to high dimensions. We talk about the three dimensional, eventually four dimensions, even higher dimension. Uh, the uh, you know the uh, applications. So this is this is really the power, and also uh, the interesting features of uh, electromagnetics. So the uh, e indeed EM empower empower us to develop uh, more functionalities, more applications, and of course the uh, you know the more opportunities for everybody. Okay, that's the that's why I want to. <laughs> to tell you. OK, uh, thank you very much for sharing your stories with us. Uh, let's talk about some, let's talk something about the 5G, OK? As we all know that the 5G technologies are pushing the intelligent environments into reality. Uh, various power harvesting or transfer technologies are hot topics right now because uh, they are assumed to be solutions to power the huge number of various sensor nodes in IoT applications. So what are the new challenges in the field of wireless power harvesting? Well, uh, as you know that the, uh, we, uh, we, uh, we have been working in, in, in the field of the wireless power uh, the, uh, since a uh, while, since many years now. Uh, yes, I, uh, I, I was the uh, principal guest editor uh, for, the, uh, for a special issue on this topic. Uh, which was published in the IEEE uh, the proceedings. Uh, well, the, the, the major challenge today uh, in the field of wireless power harvesting is really to get the, uh, you know, the enough power from the, uh, for, for, the, uh, for future IoT uh, applications. This means that we need to have the, uh, to harvest the ambient power um, to drive to power uh, uh, these uh, the uh, you know those low, dat low, dat low latency devices, such that the, the we are able to develop batteryless uh, the uh, the uh, wireless sensor network. Uh, this is a major step for us to develop the uh, ubiquitous uh, IoT uh, sensors uh, networks. Uh, so. Uh, in the end, the low power and ambient power harvesting become the uh, major drivers. The problem today, the, uh, the ambient power is, uh, you know, usually it's uh, present very low electromagnetic magnetic, uh, power density. Okay? You, you don't have very high uh, power density there. We talk about like uh, uh, minus 50 dBm uh, per centimeter square. Um, and also the... Um, the you know if you got a little bit of the uh, high power density area usually for example in special uh, you know well located regions you got maybe minus twenty but it's still weak uh, it's too weak to drive those uh, wireless sensor network so uh, but uh, the for many practical applications you you need to have like uh, minus uh, at least minus twenty but you can get minus fifteen but of course you can, you can develop a special antenna technology to to collect to harvest those ambient power, but on the, other, on the other hand, you need also to have the very good, uh, the high efficiency power harvesting, which means you need to develop 
not only just antenna and also circuits, but the, in the circuits, the key components is really the active uh, the uh, conversion, so which means high efficiency conversion from the uh, the ambient um, uh, the radio frequency power to, uh, for example, DC uh, power, which usually can be uh, to to get stored, uh, you know, like a storage. Okay, when storage can be uh, can be uh, the uh, developed through the supercapacity or any other the uh, devices, uh, even batteries. But the uh, because we don't want to have the battery, so supercapacity may be uh, uh, you know the the uh, um, uh, element of the choice. So uh, so that means that the uh, how to collect the uh, the uh, 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 the ambient power as high as possible. So that means that we we have look at the uh, antenna technology, uh, the uh, circuit technology, and also how to create a high efficiency power harvesting from the the IF power to the DC, that means we had to look at the, how we can get the uh, good, the uh, conversion efficiency. But on top of that, we have to also think about the uh, special applications for uh, the wireless power harvesting. One example is that the, uh, the, uh, uh, from the IF to IF, which means we can use also the um, batteries, batteries backscattering techniques. So this is also additional uh, interesting, uh, the, uh, let's say, application of wireless power. So wireless power basically has two major uh, the, uh, applications. One is the, from the IF to DC conversions, uh, and that's the power harvesting. Second is the IF to IF conversions. That's what we talk about here, is the uh, backscattering techniques. So those uh, the those the technologies actually um, uh, as principal drivers behind all those IoT uh, you know future 5G nerds uh, the um, the uh, different type of the wireless uh, systems. So I believe this is uh, uh, you know the uh, major challenge there. So to be able to collect those uh, uh, high power as high, say the ambient power as high as possible, there's different solutions there. But to the, today, I can see that the, uh, you know, there's a very interesting development is based on the hybrid power, which means not only just to collect, harvest the uh, ambient electromagnetic power, but also ambient, uh, the, uh, the, you know, the mechanical energies, uh, you know, such as the uh, yeah, mm -hmm. other things, different type of the, uh, and also thermal, that's right, mm -hmm. thermal, thermal, the, thermal power. Uh, ambient thermal powers, and uh, so in addition to classical like uh, uh, solar powers. So yes, indeed, uh, the uh, the thermal power, the uh, mechanical power. Uh, okay, sometimes we call the kinetic power, mm -hmm. um, and also the uh, electromagnetic energy. Put them together to build up the you know the uh, sustainable uh, uh, ubiquitous. Uh, the uh, power so uh, uh, the sources there. So actually, you are, you are yourself you have been working on this uh, hybrid power. Yes. <laughs> so it's a very important, uh, the interesting uh, research topics. This could be the uh, fundamental, uh, the uh, you know technology for future IoT. This will be the also the uh, uh, interesting paradigm shift uh, in the in the uh, in the future or emerging uh, the uh, power, wireless power harvesting. Yeah, thank you very much for the penetrating analysis. So maybe we still need some time to make the better release IoT into real real reality, right? So, yeah, okay, sure. <laughs> let's move to the antenna. Antennas are important part in our front end. So what are the new trends of the antenna designs in 5G or beyond 5G technologies? Well, first of all, the 5G is really the, uh, uh, the opportunity for us to rethink about the wireless technology itself, okay? It's a turning mm -hmm. point to, to, to create um, a different mainstream uh, the wireless applications. For example, the, before the 5G, uh, from first generation to the, fifth, uh, the fourth generation, we talk about basically the, uh, the communication only, okay? It's mm -hmm. really the communication-centric the uh, applications. But uh, starting from 5G, we talk about now the sensor network, we talk about the 
uh, the uh, you know the location services. We talk about the uh, of course different IoT which are not necessarily uh, related to the communication. So the the wireless sensor network beca will become the the major driver behind this uh, 5G uh, application and beyond uh, 5G. Uh, so uh, and also wireless power applications. For example, the wireless power also will become the uh, one of the very interesting, uh, the major, uh, the mainstream, uh, the technology for 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 future wireless applications. So so 5G and beyond 5G will merge those different wireless functional functionalities. So for example, there's three three major uh, the functionalities. Uh, I talk about three functions okay, here. The one first one is the wireless, uh, the data transmission. Uh, second is wireless, uh, the uh, parametric sensing. The third one is the definitely wireless power uh, delivery. Okay, so uh, so if so so starting from five G, we can see the uh, the uh, how we can merge those uh, uh, different uh, the wireless functions into uh, single transceivers. To make those uh, those uh, wireless functionalities in uh, the you know the um, to to uh, to create a mutual we call the uh, the you know the uh, interplay okay uh, how we can use those, uh, the interesting uh, the applications there but to design those uh, uh, this this uh, the multifunction systems the antenna will become very important part okay so and mm -hmm. also we need to think about how we can create um. Uh, multi multi band antennas because you know you may need multi band to support those multi functionalities and also uh, you need to also develop uh, the uh, miniaturized antennas and also you need to think about how we can create a highly uh, uh, you know efficient smart antenna system to make the uh, also system the configurable uh, so those 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 kind of the uh, the antenna will become the trendy development in the fields. And in particular, we talk about the high density integration for antenna with circuits, because the uh, antenna is not just a device which have the, uh, the uh, which serve as a interface between the air and the, um, and, and the circuits, but also the antenna will have this strong interaction with the environment and the circuit itself. For example, you can integrate the antenna on the uh, the semiconductor devices, which is actually high K substrates, okay? So to create a very high efficiency uh, antenna radiating elements on the high K semiconductor substrates is very challenging too. So uh, I believe that the, this is really important. And uh, the, uh, the, the uh, so that's why I say the antenna cannot be, uh, you know, the cannot stand alone. We need to think about uh, the create many interesting New development, which involve the circuits, antenna, and, uh, and and also put the antenna in the system perspective. Um, the, so that's why the uh, multi band miniaturization, uh, smart, the, the configurable antenna technology uh, will become the uh, the uh, you know the uh, important uh, the uh, research topics, and also with a special interest on the high K semiconductor substrates. And uh, for the high frequency applications such as millimeter wave terahertz, uh, because today, you know, the 5G, uh, that's a very important uh, millimeter wave band, bands are located for 5G applications. But also we can see that the, uh, the uh, emerging 6Gs, for example, which is focused on the, um, uh, you know, the, uh, let's say the uh, sub terahertz applications, okay. so. For those kind of frequencies, antenna design, high efficiency antenna design become the more and more challenges. And uh, so, you know, looking at the um, different scales, the size, we talk about size, uh, functions, efficiency, uh, the integrations, and so on, so on. Okay. Uh, yes, I agree that nowadays the, the antennas are required to provide better in the more complex performances in very limited areas. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so except antennas, uh, great efforts have been put in the development of, of 5G technologies like uh, microwave circuits, transceivers, and so on. So could you please kindly share your thoughts about the fields that we can continuously work on in 5G or beyond? 
Well, I can see that to the uh, there's a big uh, you know the uh, let's say movement in the field here is that the how we can create a multifunction systems. Okay, uh -huh. so which means that the we can see that the multifunction means that the merge all those uh, the data communication, parametric sensing, and the wireless power all together. Okay. Uh, mm -hmm. So that's the uh, that's the really big movement there, and uh, to to achieve that movement, we need to think about how we can create a highly uh, efficient the front end systems, and which in, involve antennas, microwave circuits. Uh, of course, that's a part of the building blocks in the entire system, entire transceiver design, and also uh, we need to think about the uh, different uh, frequency applications for different different frequency bands. We talk about also, for example, the, for, the, for the today's uh, from first generation to fifth generations, the sub seven or sub six gigahertz, uh, you know, uh, application uh, will remain the mainstream uh, system for, uh, for high uh, mobility uh, applications. Uh, that's the, that's what be these, you know, uh, it, we call it the, uh, the high mobility because the, this allows us to have the very good the uh, you know the um, you know the uh, uh, the cellular system uh, deployment, but at the same time we have seen that also uh, tremendous interest efforts invested in the um, in the development of the uh, the mini microwave systems. Well, and also that's why we have we eventually ended up with a multi band application which should cover the low frequency such as sub six sub seven gigahertz, but also the uh, millimeter wave applications, but beyond the 5G, we talk about terahertz applications. So terahertz is another additional frequency band. So since we talk about the multi uh, up, uh, multi function uh, systems, so which means that the we talk about sensor network, while the sensor uh, the um, you know the uh, uh, the design the sensor system design, but also the data communication system design. And the wireless power system design, uh, we talk about power harvester, uh, you know, for example, here. So the antenna circuits will create an interplay, okay? How to create them uh, in a very integrated uh, format. That's a very interesting topic. Uh, so because I said uh, earlier that the antenna is circuit, circuits and antennas, uh, we, we, should, we, can, we can develop such a philosophy for the uh, front end design and also how to create a, such a multifunction um, the uh, multifunctionalities within such transceivers actually is very, very difficult because the, uh, the, uh, the uh, KPI, I would say KPI, the key uh, performance index for such systems for different applications, actually they are controversial. Uh, I, oh no, they're contradictory. I'm not controversial, contradictory here. The reason why I'm saying contradictory, for example, for communication applications, okay, let's talk about communication. The antenna design uh, could be uh, like uh, the the uh, uh, the for example the narrow band or broader band uh, could be or usually it could be a median gain, not necessarily high gain. Okay, but for sensor application, for the radar applications, the antenna usually are required to provide a very high gain. Okay, and so in that case, if you put the uh, the uh, single antenna for in support of these two applications. You need um, uh, uh, really the configurable antenna, which provide a, a, a broad beam, at the same time narrow beam, uh, for, for you know for which can which should be uh, should be uh, should be developed in support of these uh, two applications. Okay, for example, this is typical uh, the scenario you can see. So the multifunction uh, system indeed prevent, present opportunities, but also uh, great challenges. Okay, so that's why we need to have lots of uh, research in that direction. So I still believe that the, we have lots of work which, uh, you know, uh, call for uh, our uh, special uh, investment efforts. And uh, the, so the microwave engineers, antenna engineers, electromagnetic engineers in general, uh, you know, the, uh, are required uh, to uh, invest uh, in, uh, you know, the tremendous energy in that direction. So I think that we have lots of work to do, okay? Yeah. Um, and also yeah. the uh, lots of uh, challenging behind us. 
uh, before us. And of course, we have to take those things uh, uh, you know, easy and uh, also make sure that the, we have lots of uh, research project. Okay, so yeah. Yeah, uh, okay. Yeah, thank you very much for your generous sharing. Uh, it really provides many excellent directions or areas that we can continuously work on. Okay, I think uh, our episode today uh, is going to end here. Uh, thank you very much, Professor Wu. Thank you for joining us. Uh, thank you. <laughs> well, thank you very much, Professor Guo, for these opportunities. And of course, the, uh, I, I will be uh, uh, very pleased to continue to work with you and the, uh, all others. To, to make sure that the 5G, beyond 5G, will be a uh, well-present bright future for all of us. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, Professor. Wu.